Um, minor patch notes for 321, that is today. Login rewards. Now properly catching and handling failed login reward. Claim attempts. If the claiming or the login reward fails, it will no longer alert players that they receive the items when they do not. This one's pretty straightforward. Just a bug fix. <clears throat> uh, next. Fixed, not being able to claim rewards if the player has multiple stacks of an item they're being rewarded. So, essentially, if there were multiple stacks in the player's inventory, sometimes you would not be able to claim the reward if that was the same item type. That bug has been fixed. Login rewards menu will now center on the current next claimable reward. Actually, I was going to make this recommendation that they do this today. So I'm very glad that they did. Um, that's very good news. So instead of having to scroll over to claim your reward if you're on day 20 or 30, it'll automatically center at that part of the thing, which is, is a pretty nice quality of life change, in my opinion. Fixed issue where the daily reward prompt would continually pop up even after claiming your daily reward. So this is something that's been pretty annoying um, where anytime after 20 minutes it would continually harass you to claim your reward even though you have and so every time you join the game they claim your daily reward it's like i already did um so that's a pretty nice fix that i'm really glad you did um fixed streak multiplier not being applied to login rewards so apparently the streak multiplier was no longer working which is pretty frustrating uh so now the multiplier is back meaning that if log in for consecutive days, you're going to get more and more rewards. Um, then even as displayed on the thing, it'll be multiplied, you know, it's a six English U, it'll be 12, if you two, et cetera. XP gain UI. Remo this is a really nice change, in my opinion, something I requested um, and I'm really happy about. By the way, huge shout out to Zach and Blides for getting this update out today. They've been on it and most of these changes are from Zach uh, and Travis over there at the studio almost none of them are mine uh just been a lot of work guys so please make sure to give them a thank you they're working very hard on this stuff uh so they removed the old exp rate HUD in the inventory which in my opinion should have never been there it's always been if like what xp rate am I at I, it's like hard to know um Move the XP rate info to the top bar alongside zone info, daily login rewards, and PvP. So in the top left of the screen now, you will see a little times one, times two, times three uh, for uh, your XP rate. Click on the icon to prompt a 30 plus uh, XP boost purchase. Displays on everywhere you're getting XP, base rate, weekend bonus, Infernum zoned bonus and any active boost. I don't know. I asked him to make it so that when you click on it, if you already have an XP boost, it activates one. So really just simple. It's just like you go to the top left, you click on it, boom, you're using your boost. I know personally, I have a ton of boosts that I just don't use because they're in my inventory. It's kind of inaccessible to get there. But this one, it's very easy. You just go to the top left, you click on it and you're there, boom, 1.5 times XP, uh, which is a pretty nice quality of life change if that's added. But don't have a boost it's going to prompt you to buy one making that easy as well and this displays everywhere you're getting xp base rate weekend bonus infernum zone bonus and any active boost so this is kind of just helping you track okay what am i getting a boost from where is this a matchmaking boost what's going on a status effect i actually did not do these changes but um this is pretty nice so fixed game breaking from dying to status from damaging status effects so there were a lot of little bugs um basically like if you died to a bleed while blocking then you couldn't no longer block and there were other ones like uh, in matchmaking if you died to bleeding uh or poison i know not many people use poison but if you used died to a dps status effect you could no longer respawn in team death matches and the team death match clicker would not count it as a kill because the thing was firing it was saying you died but it didn't know who killed you because you died to bleeding instead of a typical sword hit so that's been fixed 
Um, and status effects can now be applied to NPCs. So if you hit an NPC with a poison arrow, they will be poisoned. There's a chance that you can maim them. There's a chance you can do bleeding damage on them or maze them, uh, which is a pretty nice change. I know NPCs have been very OP lately uh, just because they don't have the ability to have status effects affected on them, but they can commit status effects on you. So this really balances the odds and I think makes combat quite a bit more enjoyable. <clears throat> discovery locations. So this is just some minor changes to discovery changes. So I'm just going to go through these real quick. Change the following discovery location icons. Basuna, uh, Foresta, Bu <laughs> I speak Italian. I Foresta Boyo uh, has been changed to the forest icon. Palermo, Castello Amare, which has been changed to the castle icon. Uh, for the Royal Palace of Palermo. Jaffa, St. Peter's Talent Tower, has been changed to the tower icon. Jerusalem Veterans Graveyard has been changed to the graveyard icon. Herod's Tower to the tower icon. Montreal, same map icon on Montreal map and Southern Levant map. And Montreal Keep, so just some consistency issues there. Sion, Sion Castle, Sion Icon, Sion Gate, Gate Icon. Bolsol, Order of the Ram Graveyard has been changed to the graveyard icon. Uh, Jerusalem. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I think these are new discovery locations that have been added, or just some changes. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, this is how it'll be from now on. Fixed travel point not appearing on the map for Jerusalem. Slightly moved Jerusalem market so it doesn't overlap with the arena. I had done that, but I guess it wasn't pushed. Increased discovery radius of Martyr's Hill. Renamed Jerusalem Gates to be historically accurate. Added Zion Gate Discovery Location. Located near the, near the new Caravan Master, which we'll get to soon. That's actually a change I did. Southern Levant. Fixed incorrect names in garrison descriptions. Changed some icons for various discovery locations. Added discovery location for Ascalon Travel Point. Added descriptions to all discovery locations in Palermo. So this is just, you know, little quality of life stuff. Obviously not that major, but I think Belides did these. So make sure to give him a huge shout out. And thank you. There's so many things that go into an MMORPG that are just so minute and detail-oriented, and it's very easy to lose track of these things, but those things also build a very good sense of just being in a game and feeling alive in an experience. So they're very important, and it's always great when we actually have people doing these things. So please send a big thank you to uh, Belides uh, for making those changes. Okay, Garrisons. Redesign Castellum Rudgery. Arsif Pass, I think that's in the Southern Levant, to be a castle. Ibelin, Jaffa Pass, now has castle walls. In non-conquest servers, you can now fast travel to garrisons after completing its cartography quest. So this is a pretty big one, guys. So let's say I'm in Teutonics, and I want to travel to French territory in a southern in a secondary server, let's say to access a Infernum Zone, let's say to do a quest. I can do that as soon as the cartography quest is completed. It does not have to be by territory. However, in the Conquest server, the old rules still apply. So it's playing more like an open world single player RPG in secondary or questing servers. And then in primary Conquest servers, enemies and all those things are still going to be taken into account. So I cannot travel to an enemy's territory, only my allies. This is a pretty big quality of life change for just doing quests, especially as we expand quests into the open world. I'm very happy with this change. It's just going to make it a lot easier. Uh, and alongside that change, you are now also going to spawn at the nearest garrison. So <laughs> currently, if you're trying to do a quest or doing something in the Levant and you die, you have to walk miles and miles and miles either from the uh, neutral spawn, which is typically near the coast, uh, or you have to walk all the way from your territory back. And this is just very frustrating in a non-conquest server. It's just not good game design. So and if, uh, originally we thought, okay, well, that's the benefit of having your own territory. But in a secondary server, it should actually feel like you're progressing. It should actually feel like, you know, hey, I'm going into this area and I'm completing the cartography quest. Okay, great. Now I've kind of conquered this area for myself personally. And so I can travel back here. I can use this for mining. I can use this for whatever I want. And this is also a good incentive for the cartography quest to be completed because I know there haven't been a ton of good incentives to do those. And they can be kind of tedious to complete for little rewards. So just keep that in mind. 
And if no cartography quests have been completed, they're just going to spawn at the nearest travel point like they currently uh, Fixed Burarier, Burarier territory showing up as Adiesa. Adies, Adiesa on the map or minimap. Ladesha and Gorentas are now connected. Alhafa and Beit Yashut are now con connected. So these are pretty big changes as far as territory conquest and garrisons go. So for you that are in these regions, make sure to keep note of this, that these lines of attack are now open. Uh, it should already show that way on the territory map. This is a bug fix, but don't leave those borders unguarded if... Rename the following garrisons. And okay, so these changes were made for historical reasons and also just I think better immersion. Uh, Arsif Pass is being renamed to Castellum Rogeri. Jaffa Pass has been renamed to Ibelin, Outpost of Mount Etna to Mount Etna Camp, Marsala Fort to Marsala, Cor Corleone Fort has been renamed to Corleone, uh, Corleone, uh, Cefalu Fort has been renamed just to Cefalu, Cal Calta Girone Fort has been renamed to Calta Girone, Modica Fort, Modica, Nudum Fort, Nudum. Um, I think some of the reasons for dropping the forts is it's a little confusing if it's not actually a fortress like this is a fort but it's not a fortress it's just a little bit confusing also fort is a little bit too uh contemporary of a term in my opinion to be used in medieval times to this excess although of course it would be used i just feel like fortress spelled out just feels a little bit music changes added new music for jerusalem by haru yeritz this sounds really great this has been in for a while um, and some of these other changes, the old road Tarsus playlist is now playing at Antioch, meaning that battle of Hattin music that plays over and over again. Not the case. We have a whole custom playlist for Antioch. The same goes for Palermo, Ascalon, and Montreal. These are all individual and separate playlists that were being used at the old roadmaps since those are tired. They'll use the Okay. Now we are done with just sort of general quality of life changes and additions, and we're going to get on to fixes. Bug fixes one, thing, fix king plaques in Jerusalem showing up in weird places, made it show the future king names cannot be repeated, saving space. Fix being unable to reset a skill tree due to the cost of previously chosen skills being increased. Fix being unable to reset a skill tree due to a previously chosen skill being renamed. Um, okay. Good fix. Fix the minimap not being forced on mo for mobile players. So this is a pretty big fix. If you're on mobile, um, if you turn the minimap off, you're actually soft locked because there's no other way to access your menus. So now mobile players have to have the minimap on so they can actually access their buttons to open the menu. Uh, fix the player character being locked facing a certain direction in Ascalon, Ascalon Siege, and Ascalon Battlefield. There's just a simple setting we forgot to click on, which is causing a lot of issues for Ascalon that has been resolved. Fix not being able to interact with most anvils and all region maps. Pretty nice quality of life change uh, in Fix. Fix titles not updating in game when changing factions, ranks, or gaining losing honor. So now the titles are going to update a little quicker. Fixed issue where you can no, would not interact with skill tree until closing it and being prompted to open it. Okay, so um, per skill point. So... There was a basically the a blank scroll that was covering the skill tree menu, which was pretty annoying. Uh, so that's been removed. Fixed bleeding and other damaging status effects from breaking de matchmaking death matches, specifically 1v1s and 3v3s, actually. By not detecting, adding points for kills. And fixed combat logging. Dead fixes part two. Fixed issue where players were able to drop arrows while an arrow was loaded resulting in the ability to infinitely fire off arrows. Okay, that's a pretty nice fix. Fixed issue where mobile users could not flag for PvP. Fixed issue where players' PvP flag would not automatically be toggled on when in an arena zone, which I know was pretty frustrating. You're practicing and sparring uh, for your faction, and you're losing honor. Um, and a lot of people got lost a lot of honor that way. Uh, so that's been fixed. Fixed an issue where the color of a player's name on the nameplate would not change based on the faction, clan, or family they are in. Um, that's a pretty big up. Uh, it's getting very confusing to tell who's in what uh, faction, especially on the battlefield. So that's a huge change to help. Fixed issue where new users did not have Jerusalem discovered by default, resulting in them not being able to fast travel there. 
Uh, so basically, new users getting locked from Jerusalem, which was harming recruiting. Fixed issue where UI wouldn't update during a UI tutorial step where the player is directed to click on a button. Okay, that was also causing a lot of soft locks. Miscellaneous, uh, this is repeated. Minimap is now forced on for mobile users. Servers will shut down after five hours of update time instead of two hours. We heard that two hours was a little too excessive. Um, so five hours, which will be less annoying to deal with uh, having to do shutdowns. Added go back and never mind options to all shipmaster NPCs at seaports. I did that. That was quite annoying to add. But now if you go to your second selection uh, in the seaport dialogue, you can always go back if you change your mind or just not tell. Players titles will now show up in the chat. Uh, this is a pretty nice quality of life change in my opinion uh, and just makes the chat a little better over. Completely rewrote and optimized the spawning code. Rebels will know they're no longer spawn at the owner's bases. Um, and when they're rebelling, rebels will no longer spawn uh, at uh, the it's the same thing. Okay, no, so they don't spawn at the owner spawn at allies bases or owners bases. Got it. The honor display and title select UIs will no longer show up unless the inventory is open, which is nice. It was kind of bugging, and all the other menus were showing this too, and it's a little redundant. You should only see that in the inventory menu. Remove the XP boost tutorial and the equip axe the UI tutorial while a, on a guiding light. Uh, change. If you earn a skill point from the level up, the level up rewards prompt will now have an option to open up the skill tree. Removed old skill point prompt. So basically, we've consolidated the level up UI with the old prompt that said that forced you to level up your skill tree when you got a new skill point. Some of you late game players might not realize that because you're leveling up so infrequently, but this is pretty frustrating for new players, especially if you're grinding a new skill. Um, so now once you get your level up prompt, it'll give you an option to open up the skill tree and spend the Jerusalem now has a caravan master by the gate. Um, uh, we have a lot more patch notes. To okay. Uh, which I added this. So this was by request. You can teleport to any of the Levant's um and malta from the caravan master so malta only if you've not completed the story but uh, or have not completed the multis port portion of the story but now you can teleport to the vaunts quite easily which is a pretty nice quality of life change i know people were requesting that was in cena that was not carried over to jerusalem when we faction patch notes for 321 24 uh so these are just very i know a lot of people are excited about these ones specifically um so Knights Templar fixes, fixed the big black cross rank names, fixed all division uniforms not being accessible at incorrect ranks, fixed division leader titles to correspond with rank names. Uh, so guys, like a lot of these changes are very simple to make, but again, as I was kind of talking about, when you have such a large MMO and such a small team, a lot of these things get lost in the shuffle. So we do appreciate your patience on these. I know you guys have been waiting for a lot of these for a long time, and we probably didn't get to all of them in this patch, but just keep being patient, keep making your requests politely, and they will get addressed. Kingdom of Jerusalem rank changes. Veteran Militia is now Footman. Knight Errant is now Knight of Jerusalem. Knight Captain is now Knight Paladin. Master of Arms is now Grand Cross. Baron is now Lord of Jerusalem. Discounts is now Baron of Jerusalem. Teutonic Order rank changes. Uh, let's see if I can do this in my German. Orden, Orden Marshal is now Orden's Marshal. Okay. Uh, Duchy, Duchy of Saxony changes. Boosman is now. Uh, Boosman is now Fusman LR1. Um, veteran Fusman is now Soldat. New rank is now. Corporal. <laughs> okay, good. There's no longer new rank. Viteron Sashen is now Viteron Sashen MR2. New rank is now, or there's a new rank. Ritter Captain von Sashen. Uh, Edel von Sashen is now Edel von Sashen. I don't know. Is in German, is the CH hard or soft? New, somebody who speaks German, uh, yeah, please tell me how I'm doing. New rank, Commandant von Sashin. Sash, Sashin. I don't know how to say that. Herzrog von Sashin is now Herzrog von Sashin. Okay. 
Autobagat of Silvas, rank changes. Oster Bay is now Oster Bay MR. Botferraka is now Pizdar. Agar is now Agar. Ag Agha is now Agha. Aga Boss is now Boss Aga. Musir is now Umir. Uh, Beler Bay of Sivas is now Atabeg of Sivas. Knight Sergeant is now Master of Arms and Holy Sepulcher. A new rank for Grand Cross Knight. Grandmaster is now Grandmaster of the Holy Sepulcher. Duchy of Normandy, Levy, Footman, Hom de Arms, Sergeant de Arms, Squire, Chevalier, Chevalier, uh, Baron, Constable, Duke of Normandy, Duchy of Lancaster, Levy Archer, Yeoman, Marksman, Ranger, Viscount, Earl, Duke. Uh, some more miscellaneous changes to factions, and this will wrap us up. Added a debounce to accepting diplomacy requests, preventing multiple alliances from appearing of the same kind. Updated the command menu to display above faction menu so you can read the right side of it and actually join the command group. Uh, yeah, this was a pretty annoying fix uh, that needed to happen. Fixed member listing called to quickly spam. This might still be happening in the command menu. I'm not sure. Uh, but I fixed it to the best of my ability. At the time, Assassin Vanguard leader uniform no longer available at commander rank. Uh, extra high command ranks have been changed to high ranks in these divisions. ACA, Champions of the Order and Guardians, Kingdom of Jerusalem, Ebelin, Galilee, and Tripoli. Third command, third high command rank is following fa in the following factions has been changed to high rank. Uh, Ayubid, Kingdom of England, Prince of Antioch. So this is actually a pretty big change for people in those factions. Um, so there's just less high command. High command have way more voting power. They have more uh authority and commands and so those being changed down to just be hiring oh we've got an endorsement Belides just endorsed one dollar the qa members are spreading lies and propaganda about having to work in poor conditions what do you have to say about this thank you for the donation Belides. uh Belides. i will i will address that let me get to the last two things in the patch notes things Lordship of Limassol, uh, Protalatos, and Protocarabos are now middle rank. Fixed Zanga divisions miss, missing an applicant rank and adding descriptions to KOE divisions, which I roasted them for, if you guys recall, in our division tier list. Uh, to answer Bolides' question, Bolides' questions, um, you could never be working in poor conditions when you work from home. You need to stop complaining. <laughs> Do more work. Not enough. We're all capitalists here, guys. Okay. Oh, apparently it's pronounced Saxon. So, uh, we are done here with the patch notes. Please let me know in the comments, in the chat, what you think of these patch notes. Uh, how you like us doing these co this content to actually go over the patch notes and explain them to you because I know sometimes you guys see a big wall of text and you're like, uh, go through that. I don't know what this means. So just keep that in mind. We're going to keep doing this. Um, and uh, I'm going to fix, I'm going to correct this because I'm learning German. Let's do this one more. Ritter von Sachsen is now Ritter, Ritter von Sachsen. That seems like I'm doing like Scandinavian. Ritter von Saxon. Ritter Captain von Saxon. Adele von Saxon. Commandant von Saxon. Herzog von Saxon. How's that? That improved? Let me know. And uh, that's going to do it for the patch notes. So thanks for tuning in for that. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe below. If not, leave a dislike and tell us why this content could be improved in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next one.